Welcome, friends and guests. It's a great day at Cincinnati Rotary. It's December 1st. It's a beautiful day. And it is Firefighter Appreciation Day. <laughs> Chief Washington, this is a great day to celebrate your team and your force. It's a truly special day here at Cincinnati Rotary. We will, we're also uh, honored that you invited your color guard to kick off our program today. Follow, so the color guard will, will march and present the colors, followed by another special treat, a friend of Cincinnati Rotary, now retired firefighter John Winfrey, will perform the national anthem for us. So color guard, take it away. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you to the Cincinnati Color Guard. Please, re please remain standing for the invocation and four-way test by Kay Atkins. Get the right paper. Thank you, President Steve. Dear God of the universe, we appreciate the blessings of the past which give us hope in the future. Support us in Rotary's work to actively pursue peace and goodwill at work, in our neighborhoods, and around the world. Please bless the work of Rotary International's seven peace centers. As Rotarians, we will seek and accept help in reducing misunderstandings at home and in the wider community. We are grateful for the first responders who have jumped into dangerous situations in our community, in our country, and across the world. We value all the professional firefighters in our community and in our region. 
These men and women protect us around the clock, day in and day out, in good weather and in bad, often in very challenging circumstances. We appreciate them and we ask that you bless all our safety and security professionals. As we begin this last month of the year, which has religious significance for so many, guide us in the spirit of peace and goodwill toward all, and inspire us to remember and nourish our own spiritual selves. We are thankful for the food we received today and especially grateful for those who prepared and served it. Amen. Amen. Now, let us repeat the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. You may be seated. Okay, that was beautiful. Thank you very much for sharing that invocation. John Winfrey, I think I heard a flyover just like right over the Hilton as you were hitting that final note. That was amazing. Thank you for joining us. Coming out of retirement, excellent. Thank you very much. We have a number of guests and prospective members to welcome today. And I'd like to invite past president Uta Popka to welcome them. Thank you, President Steve. It's a pleasure to be here, and I would like to welcome our guests today. And if I call, and when I call your name, if you would be so kind and stand up. Is Todd Anderson, he's the guest of Jim Young. Please stand, okay. And uh, please, why don't you just stay standing until the rest are called. Uh, next, we have Gary Catano, and he is the guest of Steve King. And then we have Will Hand, who is the guest of Nancy Hand. Okay. Alan Miller, the guest of Dan Long. And we have Roslyn Phillips, the guest of Huxley Miller. We also have Darlene Underwood, the guest of Pete Armstrong. <laughs> then we have Nick Succorelli, the guest of Rick Flynn. We have Tom Tiller, who is the brother-in-law of Owen Rasman. So you please... So I hope you all come back. We welcome you to our club. And we have something for everyone to do here. Thank you. Well done, Uta. Thank you very much. Welcome guests and prospective members. Also welcome to all the families of our awardees today. It, we hope you come back and join us in service. Speaking of service, in October, Owen Rassman and Susan Wilkinson co-chaired an inaugural event called Rotary Due Days. It was a community-wide community service project. And here for a report about that project and recommendations for the future is Chair Susan Wilkinson. Susan? Thank you, President Steve. I'm gonna do a little double duty before I get started with due days. Um, Steve Rogers uh, of Steve's, Steve Rogers and Associates is today's meeting sponsor. Steve was unable to join us today because he needed to attend a funeral, and he asked if I would say a few words about his company, which I am happy to do. Steve Rogers and Associates are your local, family-owned and trusted independent insurance agency. They understand how important your family, your business, and your possessions are to you, and they know you may not know how to best protect them. They have the experience to navigate the unique risks you face, serving as your insurance advisors and advocates. When you partner with Steve for your insurance needs, you also get the expertise of Alex, Alex Rogers, Steve's son, who is a Rotarian in the Northeast Cincinnati Club. 
Rotarians all around. Please look to Steve Rogers and Associates for your home, auto, life, and business insurance. Thank you, Steve, for supporting today's meeting. <laughs> okay, now on to Rotary due days. All right, we have new pictures that accompany our, um, our slide for, for due days. Um, as, uh, hmm. All right. No, it's not. I hate when this happens. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Technology strikes. Okay, well, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, in October on the 21st and 22nd, uh, we held our first Rotary Due Days. And uh, I hope you remember the genesis for this. It, was, it grew out of a, the strategic plan from a few years ago. It was to be a signature project that would highlight what Club 17 does. Uh, we uh, held projects at these 17, excuse me, we had 16 projects, uh, and they're listed on this slide. Uh, some of you may remember that originally we were to have um, 20 projects. And I want to make a comment about that. Um, three of the, uh, of the uh, projects had to be canceled because there were no volunteers that signed up to participate in these um, uh, projects. And again, this was a mutual decision that was made by the committee and also the nonprofit. Um, I want, I'll come back and talk a little bit about Saturday, our thoughts on Saturday for next year, but I want to assure you that we're trying to make these three projects that we had to cancel whole, and our hands-on service committee is attempting to schedule these projects in 2023. There was an additional uh, project that was canceled the day before it was to have occurred because of the untimely passing of an executive within that nonprofit organization. We are also trying to reschedule that project through uh, hands-on service. Okay, so let's talk about the success by the numbers. On the two days of Rotary Due Days, we had 220 volunteers, and these volunteers uh, represented 800 hours of service. 25% were Rotarians or Rotaractors, and 75% were, were company or community volunteers. Now remember, one of the objectives was to let people know about what the Rotary Club of Cincinnati does, and many of these individuals were introduced to our Rotary Club for the very first time. This was a great opportunity for us to showcase what our club does and attract potential new members. We um, initiated a very robust post-event evaluation process because we wanted to understand what worked and what didn't. We got evaluation forms back from 52 volunteers. We got evaluation forms from every nonprofit organization that we worked with on those two days, and I think that's very, a very important metric. We got evaluations from 14 ambassadors um, and two companies. Now, out of this post-evaluation process, we generated a 16-page report that is going to the board. And I'm not going to share all of that with you today. We'd be here until tomorrow. But I want to give you a few snippets um, that uh, show you how positive the responses were to Rotary Due Days and also constructive comments that people made. OK, so here are some volunteer responses. How appreciated did you feel during this event? Well, everybody felt either extremely appreciated or very appreciated. How much of an impact do you feel your work had in terms of your project? Now, I will say the vast majority either th thought that it had a great deal of impact or a lot of impact. But again, you know, even the, even the response with a moderate amount of impact is very positive. This is an important metric, I think. How familiar were you prior to the event with the Rotary Club of Cincinnati? Well, obviously, some people were very familiar because they were Rotarians or the, the uh, spouses of Rotarians. But again, some people were only somewhat familiar, and a number of people were not familiar at all. Again, one of our objectives for this signature project was to introduce people who didn't know about us to understand what we do in the community. Okay, I love this response. Would you consider participating in Rotary Due Days next year? 100% of those 52 volunteers said yes. 
All right, now on to the nonprofit responses. Again, a wonderful response. Remember, every nonprofit responded to the survey. And here, 100% of those nonprofit, nonprofits said that we were a benefit to their organization. You should be very proud of that. Okay, on to, <laughs> on to other nonprofit responses. All right, how easy was it to work with Rotary on these two days project? Well, almost everybody said it was easy. Now, one person said it was good but could have been better, and that's okay because we always want to improve, don't we? Okay, another important metric. Would you work with Rotary in the future? 100% of these nonprofits said yes. And here are a few of the responses that they gave on the surveys. They were a great group of people to work with. Loved it, definitely. I can't tell you how much we appreciated what you did for us. The residents are thrilled. The service, fellowship, and follow-up all equal unity in our community. Always impressed with the Rotary. We asked the nonprofits for suggestions for improvement. No improvement needed, we are still smiling. Have more. From our perspective, everything went off without a hitch. We accomplished a lot that day, and hopefully everyone had a nice time doing so. We have no further feedback. Thank you again for coordinating such a successful event. If the turnout is as great as it was, we would recommend serving both shelters in the future. We also asked the ambassadors and obviously the due days committee members for their comments and suggestions for improvement. And again, I, I can't go over all of them here, but I just want to highlight a few. Enhance our social media efforts before, during, and after due days. Establish social media has hashtags for the event, like pound rotary due days or pound service above self. Make sure the nonprofits also promote due days on their social media platforms. Tighten the process for tracking volunteer attendance and accommodating walk-in volunteers. And figure out a way to order up the same weather for next year. I don't know how many of you were there on those two days, the 21st and the 22nd, but we couldn't have had be better weather. All right, so the committee, the due days committee uh, recently met. And again, we reviewed that 16-page document that I mentioned earlier, and we had a great discussion on next steps for due days. And the committee will be recommending to the Rotary Club of Cincinnati Board of Directors that we begin planning now for a 2023 Rotary due days. We will be proposing next year's dates be October 26th, 27th, and 28th, as October 28th is National Make a Difference Day. I want to make a comment. We'd really like to expand Rotary Due Days. The 26th is a Thursday, the 27th is a Friday, and we'd like to focus those two days for the majority of our projects. We will support projects on Saturday, but I think based on our experience of challenges with signups on Saturdays, uh, th those, uh, the number of projects on a Saturday will be smaller. Please let the Due Days Committee know if there are nonprofits you believe would be interested in participating in 23. I don't think they'll be sorry. I would like to acknowledge, or Owen and I would like to acknowledge the committee, and if you're present, would you please stand, because you really did a phenomenal job in making this happen. So please, committee members, stand up. Okay, I'm going to conclude with a video that shows Amos, Amy Scalia of Channel 12 uh, doing an interview uh, called Amy on the Go with Sarah Patterson, and this aired on Channel 12 last week. Amy on the Go here, and today we are talking about the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. We have Sarah Patterson, the Executive Director, and what was cool about this year is the first ever event, the Due Days. Tell me about it. Yes, so it was the Rotary Due Days of Cincinnati, October 21st and 22nd. We did 16 nonprofit projects all throughout Greater Cincinnati. That's awesome. Now, who was behind this project? It was the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. And we recently surveyed our club members and asked what they want to do next. And they really wanted to do a signature service project with the city of Cincinnati and not only with Rotarians, but include those in Cincinnati who maybe haven't volunteered before. Show them all sorts of different projects, different time levels from painting to filling backpacks, building sheds, 
landscaping like we did here, we really wanted to get the community involved. What about the impact? How did this impact the community? I think a lot. I mean, 800 community service hours in just two days, and I mean, this is just the beginning. And right now, you'll talk to a lot of nonprofits, and they're hurting with COVID and still getting volunteers to come out. So it was exciting to get the volunteers out to various nonprofits like Epic House, the Girl Scouts, CPS, others to really get a taste of community service. And we hope we're either going to continue that relationship. So, what do you have coming up next? So we have hands-on service projects actually the next two weekends with the CPS school in Price Hill, helping with some outdoor education areas, some gardening beds, some a very signature project is the Rose Lawn Condon School. Rotary actually helped form that school in 1919, and we do a big Christmas party. The kids have wish lists, Rotarians buy their Christmas gifts for over 100 kids. We go in, Santa comes, hands them out a gift, very exciting, and then just our continued service projects throughout the year. Sounds like there's a lot going on, and where can someone go to learn more? CincinnatiRotary.org. Awesome. Stay tuned to see where I'm hanging out on my next Amy on the Go segment. Thanks again for participating in Rotary Due Days, and we look forward to you participating next year. Round of applause for Susan Wilkinson and Owen Raspin. Susan, new projects are particularly time-consuming and difficult to launch. Your skills as a project manager were, uh, were really shining, and we couldn't have done it without you, Susan. Thank you so much for setting us up for success. And also, Sarah Pattison, way to go. What a spokesman for uh, Rotary Due Days and for the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. Woo! Well done. Now, speaking of good spokesmen, I'd like to invite Esteban Calle to talk about the Rotary Happy Hour he has planned for next week. Esteban. Thank you, President Steve. And we are planning a happy hour, right? Um, so good afternoon, uh, Club 17. The, Rot <clears throat> the Rotary YP Committee is hosting our monthly happy hour networking mixer with entire club. Bring a friend, a prospect member, a coworker. Um, the happy hour will be on December 6, which is next Tuesday from 4.30 to 6.30 at Taft L's house in Over the Rhine. This brewery used to be a church once known as St. Paul Evangelical Church. Um, St. Paul's Ev Evangelical Church was once the oldest Protestant parish in the Queen City. Uh, it's a really neat place. We will be at the library room. First Commonwealth Bank will be sponsoring the first drink. Uh, we love to see you all if you can make it. It is a great opportunity for us to mingle outside with the rest of the club outside of our weekly lunches. Uh, please, please share this with anyone that might be interested. Take a flyer home. We have some in the back. Um, RSVP through DAGDV or email us. If you have any questions, please let me know or Christy or Sarah or any of our YP members. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. I always look forward to the happy hours, Esteban, especially that, that free first drink. Yes, that, that's excellent. And um, Taft Ale House, the library room looks kind of amazing. So thank you for, for choosing another great venue. We get to, in, to induct and welcome not one, not two, but three new members to the club. This is one of the great days in Rotary to welcome three new members. We're gonna start with the sponsor, Rick Flint, to welcome a new member. Thank you, President Steve. I'm very pleased to introduce Terry Shannon. Um, Terry does incredibly great work for DePaul Christa Ray and um, I think that's a wonderful organization. Uh, Terry and her husband, Brian, reside in Mason along with their eight children, <laughs> ages 16 through 28. Terry and Brian have six sons and two daughters. Terry graduated from Xavier University after attending high school in the Frederick, Maryland area. 
Her sales career included companies large and small, including Ford Motor Company and locally owned and run Max Technical Training. Terry enjoys career coaching, having run a job search ministry at her church, and similarly, she thrives on volunteering her time, especially when with her family at organizations including Cancer Free Kids and Melanoma No More. Terry is interested in Rotary as she's very committed to giving back to her community. Terry's role at the Paul Christa Ray High School's corporate work study program is external facing. The children or the students at her high school uh, rely heavily on local organizations that offer job spots so they can complete their graduation requirements and learn about <clears throat> very various career opportunities as they pursue college. Terry's commitment to Rotary is largely due to her passion for driving student success via community involvement and networking. Please welcome Terry Shannon. Now, Siobhan Taylor, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Shamira Smith currently serves as the Vice President of Corporate Work Study at DePaul Christa Ray High School, a local Catholic organization focused on providing high school students with limited means, a college preparatory academic experience, coupled with a unique work study program. As a Cincinnati native, Shamira has held several positions within the DePaul Christa Ray community moving from the positions of administrative coordinator and relationship manager in record time to now leading our incredible program. Indeed, she is a bright rising Cincinnati star and an incredible professional. Shamira graduated from the University of Phoenix with a BSM in business administration and management. In her free time, she enjoys event design, spending time with her husband, Nick, and her three daughters, two of whom are twins. Shamira has a deep faith and passion for education, student growth, and connecting people. She is a gift to many, and we are so excited to have her share her gifts with Rotary. Please welcome, me, welcome her to the club this year. Nancy, last but not least, is my friend Nancy. Pleasure to introduce Nancy Hand. Nancy and her husband, Will, we all met about a year ago at a, at a plant swap for gardeners. Well, it was a fig tree swap. And there's a story there, too. But I digress. Nancy was wearing a Rotary t-shirt, and I learned that Nancy and Will had recently moved to Cincinnati from Memphis, where they were three-year members of the Midtown Memphis Rotary Club. Nancy confessed she is a longtime Rotarian and even served as the 2008 president of the Lee County Sunrise Rotary in Auburn, Alabama. She came to her first Club 17 meeting and was charmed by the community and warm welcome. She knew she wanted to get involved. Nancy has a long history of service work, especially enjoys actively engaging in the community outreach projects. Nancy's an attorney by training and the CEO of Baking Bread, a team training and development company that combines the tradition of sourdough baking with communication and soft skills to bake in culture and forge healthy, collaborative, productive teams. Sounds like a delicious work environment. Nancy's looking forward to getting involved with the club and exploring committee options. In fact, you should look for her at the next four-way test speech contest committee meeting. Rarely without her camera, Nancy enjoys photography, travel, and gardening, where she recently won an award for her dahlias. 
Nancy and Will live in Wyoming with their three rescue pups. Please give a warm welcome to Nancy Hand. Welcome to all the new members. It really is wonderful to see exciting and energetic new members come into our club. It just gives us all a big boost. Now for some announcements. We have some birthdays to celebrate. Michael Schmidt, Stephanie Bird, Jim Scott, and Barb Saunders. I think I saw Michael and Stephanie here. Happy birthday to both and all of our Rotarians this week. Split the pot. Chief Washington, will you do the honors? What are the last four digits, Chief? 4208. 4208. We have a winner, Steve. Hey, Steve, you won $61 today and you're drawing for 944. So close, Steve, that, well, the plot thickens and the pot continues to grow. Come back next week for another opportunity. All right, two last calls. Here it is, last call for saving us. Catherine Hayhoe is gonna be speaking to the club in January. She wrote this book called A Climate Scientist's Case for Hope and Healing in a Divided World. A very generous and anonymous Rotarian has offered to purchase a copy for any interested Rotarian who would like to, to own a copy and read it before Catherine comes and speaks with us. You have a sign-up sheet on your, on your table. If you haven't already signed up, you're welcome to, but today is the last call. We'll try to get those ordered and distributed before the holiday break. Last call for Condon School Christmas Party Volunteers. Christmas season is kicking off next Tuesday at the Condon School Christmas Party. They still could use a few more volunteers, but the process of going to the school and checking in is a little more cumbersome this year and Mary and Bob Brandstetter would like to know who's coming so if you'd like to RSVP please contact Mary and Bob Brandstetter it's our last call the party is next Tuesday from 1 15 to 2 30 in the afternoon professional development series next week Thursday December 8th at 10.30 a.m. before this meeting. Attendees will join Carol Butler, president of the Gehring Center for Family and Private Business. I've asked the entire Rotary Club board to attend this session. I hope you can join us. Ms. Butler will teach us about working on the business versus in the business, boards of advisors and boards of directors. Be sure to RSV in DAC DB and special thanks to Bob Sheard who helped pull this off and got Carol Butler to come and speak with us next Thursday thank you Bob <laughs> upcoming hands-on service project rescheduled to Saturday December 10th we will complete a project at the common orchard from 11 a.m. to 1 30 in Price Hill the goal is replanting six to eight fruit trees in two established orchards. Do you know if they have any fig trees? I'm particularly interested in fig trees. So, so RSVP and DACDB. I might know where you could get some fig trees, Dr. Hux. So Nancy and I might be able to connect you. Women in Rotary, an afternoon give back event at Kendra Scott Jewelry Store. The Women in Rotary Committee has partnered with Kendra Scott Jewelry to raise funds for the Rotary Foundation from the sales of the Kendra Scott Jewelry line. The store is located in the Kenwood Mall. 
Find great holiday gifts while enjoying sweets, beverages, and fellowship. Sunday, December 11th, 4.30 to 6.30. RSVP for the event directly with Mary Smiley. Flyers are available. This event also needs a special RSVP, and Mary Smiley needs to know who's coming, so bear with us and grab a flyer and RSVP with Mary. Should raise funds for a good cause and be a lot of fun. UC Rotaract Festival of Lights. UC Rotaract Club is excited to announce they will be hosting Christmas zoo trips. The UC Rotaract Club would love the support and the fellowship of a few Cincinnati Rotarians on three dates, December 2nd, 14th, and 23rd. See the beautiful flyer that's floating around, and there's a QR code on that flyer to RSVP with our very own Alexia Autry. Thank you for joining us today, Alexia. <laughs> Going to the zoo and seeing the Festival of Lights will be a lot of fun, and UC students who have just come here from often from far parts of the world have often never even visited the, the Cincinnati Zoo, so how much fun would that be? Sad news from the family of Rotary, longtime Rotarian and past president, Dr. Herschel York, age 100, passed away peacefully on November 27th. Services were held on Tuesday, November 29th at the Weil Kahn Funeral Home. Herschel joined the club on October 8th, 1979. Please keep the York family and friends in your thoughts and prayers. We're also sad to share that Rotarian Thomas Ruthman passed away on November 16th. Tom joined the club on November 17th in 2003 and was a corporate member with Ruthman Companies. The funeral mass was held at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Peter in Chains on November 23rd. Please keep his wife, Audrey, and his son and fellow Rotarian, Tommy, and the rest of his family and friends in your thoughts and prayers. Now I'd like to turn the program over to Michael Vallardo to introduce our, our chief and our program with the firefighters. Uh, thank you, President Steve. This is always a great day, and uh, actually this is the first time that our committee has received the responsibility to host this day. We've been involved in the uh, uh, police department, teachers, and uh, sheriff's department, so it's good to, good to take this on as well. I have, well first let me say to you that as we were working through the logistics for this day, and I was working with uh, Kathy Ritter in the chief's office, we were talking about the logistics, and she said, well, I have somebody who's retired from the fire department who, who might sing the national anthem. <clears throat> I could reach out to him. And I knew exactly who she was talking about. And I emailed her back, and I said, I don't think Cincinnati is going to let him retire from singing the national anthem. Will you reach out to him? And so, John, thank you so much for being here. <clears throat> Now what I'd also like to say is that I have an impressive bio to read about our fire chief. And as I was reading this over and thinking about it over the last couple of days, I started to think about Cincinnati's recent experience with Luke Fickle. You know, so when they become really successful, accomplishments and achievements, they get hired away. So Cincinnati Rotarians, what I want to say to you is, Let's keep this bio to ourselves. <laughs> because what you're going to hear is an impressive um, series of accomplishments from our fire chief. So let me tell you who she is, who he is. He's a Cincinnati native, raised in Over the Rhine, a graduate from Hughes High School in 1990, We've already debated that as a Withrow grad and, and a Hughes grad, but he made it a point to tell me that he was six months old when I graduated from Withrow. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated that, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. 
Part of his growing up years, though, he was always welcomed into fire stations, encouraged by firefighters to follow his passion and to pursue a career as a firefighter. So after he graduated in 1990 from Hughes, immediately he became a firefighter EMT with Green and Coleraine Townships, and then immediately following that, he joined the Cincinnati Fire Department. For some, the attainment of one's dream job would be the culmination of effort and a place to rest for Chief Washington. It was a place that fostered his love for the fire service and encouraged his eagerness to serve his community. During his 28 plus years with the Cincinnati Fire Department, Chief Washington has held every rank and position offered as a firefighter. He has held the ranks of fire apparatus operator, fire lieutenant, fire captain, district fire chief, assistant fire chief, and now fire chief. In May of 2021, Assistant Chief Washington was sworn into as the 18th Cincinnati Fire Chief. Chief Washington has also made great strides in professional development. He's a graduate of the University of Cincinnati with a bachelor's degree in fire service engineering technology, as well as Carl Holmes Executive Development Institute, a national fire service organization devoted to providing cutting edge management training in fire services. Chief Washington is also a graduate of the National Fire Academy's Executive Fire Officer Program in Emmitsburg, Maryland. The EFOP is a four-year program representing the best of the best in fire services. Chief Washington has also successfully completed the Los Angeles City Fire Department's Leadership Academy, which is a United States Army West Point themed behavioral science and leadership theories course. Chief Washington is a 2021 graduate of Anna Maria College in Boston with a master's degree in public administration. Chief Washington has expert knowledge in several disciplines related to his field. I put that in my notes here. There was a whole list of things there. And has been hired as a consultant by various fire departments, including NASA. The chief finds time to interact with those aspiring to positions in the fire service. He is an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati Fire Service Instructor at Cincinnati State Community College, Ohio Fire Academy and United States Fire Administration, which is the National Fire Academy. Chief Washington also serves as a mentor to local young people who are interested in a career in the fire service. He's also been a technical contributor for several published fire service textbooks. Now you know why I want us to keep it quiet. Chief Washington is the proud father of three adult children, Diamond, Sequoia, and Michael Jr., who is a Cincinnati firefighter himself. Won't you give a warm Rotarian welcome to Chief Washington. I have no idea who they were just speaking about. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things this person has done, so. But I'm not here for me today. I'm here to uh, honor some of the people that work for the fire department under my command. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Rotary for supporting uh, the Cincinnati Fire Department and the members of this organization. Uh, Kay, uh, Ms. Uda, Mike, and Steve, we appreciate uh, you welcoming, into, welcoming us into your club today to, uh, to recognize these uh, individuals. I heard a theme today uh, a little while ago about what the Rotary stands for, and one of those themes was doing the right thing. That's very important today uh, on, on a multitude of different uh, scales. Um, we just came through this pandemic. Uh, things have changed immensely, and uh, organizations like this are very important as it relates to some of the people out there that fall through the cracks. So thank you to the Rotary Club for looking out for the underrepresented. Thank you. Second, I would like to thank 
the members of the command staff, and I would like for each one to stand, uh, Interim Assistant Fire Chief Matt Flagler. Just remain standing. <laughs> Matt is newly assigned to the Administrative Services Division of the Fire Department, and he's responsible for logistics, uh, supplies, uh, protective clothing, ordering fire apparatus, things that we need in order for us to make our mission, um, our mission goals and objectives successful. Assistant Fire Chief Steve Brightfielder, please stand. <laughs> Steve's responsibility is for service delivery uh, on the streets for our EMS and fire resources. He's responsible for 197 members on the street each day over four districts throughout our city, protecting our 306,000 residents that put their pillow to the head each, or put their heads to the pillow each night. So Steve is the, uh, the person that makes sure that when the person calls 911, the right resources get to that person and their needs are met. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Assistant Fire Chief Sherman Smith, Chief Smith is responsible for our Human Resources Division. Uh, he's responsible for recruiting, retention, uh, training. Uh, so all the things that make a firefighter a firefighter, Chief Smith is responsible for. Thanks, Chief Smith. <laughs> Chief Kenneth Caldwell, Assistant Chief Kenneth Caldwell, Chief Caldwell is responsible for our fire prevention and community risk reduction programs, and that's where we want to prevent the emergency from occurring. So he is the responsible for code enforcement, hazardous materials mitigations, community risk reduction programs, similar to um, the bike programs, um, car seat installations, those soft skills that the fire department is also responsible for. So not only are we responsible to re respond to emergencies, we're also responsible to, pre pre to prevent them from occurring. So that's what Chief Caldwell is, uh, what, that's what Keep Chief Caldwell does for the fire department. Thanks, Chief Caldwell. <laughs> Last but not least, Assistant Fire Chief Mark Sanders. Mark is, <laughs> Mark is the behind the scenes eye in the sky. So when there's, Large events, taste of Cincinnati, Riverfest, um, natural, uh, nat natural disasters, things of that nature. He's the person that's behind the plans in case we have that bad day, a mass casualty situation, a flood, a tornado. He's the guy that puts everything together behind the scenes to make sure if we need uh, state or federal resources, they get delivered at the right time at the right place. So Chief Sanders, he's responsible for for those items for the fire department. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> so I'd like to thank the color guard that showed up today. Uh, they do an amazing job for us. Uh, retired firefighter John Winfrey, who I had the, the um, opportunity to work with several days ago at Engine 17, 30 years ago. John was singing back then. I would also like to acknowledge the recipients' families. If you would all stand today, stand up and take a bow for the members that we have here before us. Please stand. Without you, without your support uh, to get these fine individuals to work, uh, we won't be able to deliver what we are sworn to do. So thank you. So let's get this this thing moving along, I know we're short for time. And so I want to acknowledge several members of the Cincinnati Fire Department today for various things that they do. And like I said, with these division chiefs out here, each one of these people represent a, a particular division within the fire department. So I'd like to bring up, I'd like to talk about this person first because I actually had the opportunity to train this individual. How many years ago has it been? Jeez, man, time is flying. Godly. 
That was like five days ago. 2008, I met this individual as a fire recruit. So the Community Service Award recipient this year would be Firefighter Brian Dorn. But before I bring him up, I want to say a few words about Brian. Firefighter Brian Dorn is no stranger to service to others. Before joining the Cincinnati Fire Department in 2008, he served his country in the United States Army. During this time with the CFD, Firefighter Dorn trained to become a paramedic. With his experience and expertise, he serves on many of the local EMS committees in Southwest Ohio. He's often asked to speak at local hospitals for educational purposes and for joint commission site visits for accreditations. Firefighter Dorn is gifted, is a gifted educator and has been an invaluable asset to the Cincinnati Fire Department's paramedic program. Firefighter Dorn has given hundreds of hours of his own time to teach, tutor, and mentor paramedic and EMT students from the Cincinnati Fire Department and our neighboring fire departments in the region. It is my honor and proud privilege to bring to the stage Firefighter Brian Doran, Rest Medic 46, Hyde Park, to be the 2022 Community Service Award recipient. Brian. Uh, so it doesn't sound like I had an option as far as saying a couple words. Uh, I will tell you that none of the bosses sitting here would have ever given me a microphone. Uh, so I win today. Uh, but being one of the lowest ranking members, uh, I've had a lot of support from all the people in this room. Uh, if you would have asked me in that academy 14 years ago if I would have uh, ever done what you guys have allowed me to do, uh, I would not have believed that. Um, and having an organization that is clearly very community-based uh, recognize one of us for community services is, is a huge deal. Uh, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. That means a lot to me. Um, and if we can continue doing that and raise our next generation of providers to do that, um, I venture this city will be top of the line, bar none, and nobody can hold a light to us. I appreciate that. Thank you. The next recipient, personal friend of mine, uh, Brian's a personal friend of mine, well, I don't want you to think, I'm not a friend, but. The next, next recipient is receiving the administrative award. District Chief Carstell Winston, I'd like to say a few words about Carstell. District Chief Carstell Winston is a 27 year veteran of the CFD. He's assigned to the Emergency Medical Services Division where he oversees CFD's response to over 80,000 EMS responses annually. Chief Winston has worked on numerous programs to improve the fire department's service delivery to the citizens and visitors of the city of Cincinnati. He has spearheaded the ET3 Emergency Triage Treat and Transport Program to develop a model that works best for Cincinnati. He was instrumental to the success of the CFD being selected as one of only 50 departments in the country for this project. Chief Winston has worked with local doctors and city attorneys on multiple legal contracts, which has been vital to the CFD performing EMS field research with partners such as Cincinnati Children's Hospital and the University of Cincinnati. This work will allow the CFD to continue leading the way in emergency medicine impacting and changing the way treatment is administered in the field. When it comes to cardiac care, the American Heart Association measures the standard of care. Chief Winston's leadership of the EMS division has resulted in the Cincinnati Fire Department being recognized by the American Heart Association's mission, Lifeline Gold Plus Department in 2020, 21. The department is on track to be that same recipient in 2022. 
Cincinnati Fire is the only major metropolitan city in Ohio to hit this high standard. Another innovative, initi another initiative Chief Winston has spearheaded for the CFD is the partnership he worked to build the Life Center, which directly impacts saving lives through, date, through donation of, of eye and tissue. District Chief Carstell Winston will be receiving the 2023-22 Administrative Award for Emergency Medical Services. Come to the stage, Chief Winston. quickly, I, I think they say if you choose a career that you love, then certainly you'll never work a day in your life. And I, I really believe that when it comes to the fire department. Uh, I've had a love for the fire department and just really to help because 80 some percent of everything we do is, is EMS based. So just trying to help those in the community and giving them the EMS care we can and doing it uh, times have changed, so certainly we have to evolve with it. So starting new initiatives and programs, that's, in a, of course, I'd like to thank my boss, uh, Chief Breitfeld, along with Chief Washington, who have helped and supported us in spearheading these programs. We couldn't have done it without them, but hopefully with that, we'll be able to provide more efficient service within the city of Cincinnati, so thank you. Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. <laughs> the next award, I have to go backwards here just a second. The next award recipient will be receiving the Self Improvement Award. This award will be given to District Fire Chief Greg Filia. And before I bring Greg up to the stage, I'd like to say a few words about Greg. Are you guys classmates? Okay, cream of the crop, all right. District Fire Chief Greg Filia has been with the Cincinnati Fire Department for over 27 years. In that time, he has served the city of Cincinnati on fire companies and in the fire administration division. He's been instrumental in helping with multiple projects in various divisions. Most recently, Chief Philly was assigned to the Fire Prevention and Community Risk Reduction Division. He has spent recent years pursuing higher education. And in May of 2022, Chief Philly received a Master's of Business Administration degree with a minor in Human Resource Management from Columbia Southern University. He's working to start his doctoral program in the coming months. For his dedication pursuing education, I would like to bring to the stage District Fire Chief Greg Fee, who will receive this most self-improved award. Greg. of time, I'll, I'll be real brief. I want to say thank you, and I really appreciate this. Thank you. <laughs> if anybody ever watched the movie uh, Police Academy, that's Hightower. So last but not least, the medal, or excuse me, the Award of, of Valor Award will be presented to Firefighter Brian Charles and Firefighter William Horizon. But before I bring them to the stage, I'd like to talk about the incident that they actually engaged in that brought them to the stage, that brings them to the stage today. On April 24th, 2022, 
Cincinnati Fire Department's ladder and medic 17 were dispatched for a report of a civilian bitten by a large dog roaming Mount Echo Park. Upon arrival, the companies decided to enter the park instead of waiting for police, who were not yet en route. Firefighters discovered there were numerous civilians in the vicinity of the pit bulldog. There was also a family photo shoot taking place as well as a wedding ceremony. While Medic 17 assisted the victim, two members of Ladder Company 17 worked to clear the immediate vicinity of the incident and close the park to further access. Firefighter Brian Charles and Firefighter William Herzong donned their bunker pants and protective gloves. They used a New York hook, which is a firefighter tool to pull ceilings, to corral the dog away from the civilians. And after it were me, I would just gave them doggy treats. <laughs> I keep doggy treats in my car. For approximately 20 minutes, while waiting on the police and animal control to respond, firefighter Charles and Herzog continued to confine the dog using only hand tools. The, dog, the, dogs were, the dogs were nipping at the firefighters' pants and boots, but that did not deter them from continuing to keep the dogs away from the park goers. For their dedication to the citizens of Cincinnati, Firefighter Brian Charles and Firefighter William Herzog will be receiving the 2022 Valor Award. Please come to the stage, Firefighter Charles and Firefighter William Herzog. found out about uh, 20 minutes ago that we were going to have to talk up here, so uh, thank you all for having us. I uh, really appreciate this. It means a lot. I'm um, very honored to receive this. I'm grateful to be here and very grateful to serve the citizens of Cincinnati. Thank you. As they say, best for last. Uh, I'd like to thank the chief, Cincinnati Rotary Club, President Steve and everybody to have us. I'm very honored and humbled to be here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I, before we uh, move the, the agenda along, I wanted to speak about some exciting things that are going on in the Cincinnati Fire Department. I'll be very brief. Uh, just recently, uh, the City of Cincinnati and the Fire Department broke ground on our new regional training center, which is located over in the Mill Creek site, uh, in the Mill Creek neighborhood. Um, for 22 years, we've been trying to get that project up and going, and by the grace of good planning and good executive leadership, the city uh, saw, saw a way to, uh, to fund this most needed project. Uh, over $16 million in, in public funding. And uh, we're we're really appreciative that uh, we were able to make that pro that program move forward. Uh, another program that's under Chief Caldwell's preview is, uh, for many many years, the Cincinnati Fire Department was was uh, unable to deliver uh, car seat and inspections to our uh, 20 plus thousand uh, members of our community under the age of five years old, and under. Chief Caldwell's leadership, we were able to put a program in place to now have the ability to inspect and install car seats throughout the city. So thank you, Chief Caldwell, for that. Come on. One other exciting thing that we just began under Chief Sanders' leadership, uh, we were able to implement full automatic vehicle locator dispatching. And what that means is that we no longer dispatch by where firehouses are located. We dispatch by GPS AVL, automatic vehicle locator, by the closest response unit that's near the incident. So it's all by GPS now. So that's one of the most exciting things we've done technologi technologically uh, in a long time. 
And just three weeks ago, uh, I had the honor to bring back a fire company that was disbanded in 1963 to the citizens of Westwood. We just put engine company one in service to add four more firefighters 24 seven in the Westwood neighborhood. And I have a little part here for any questions that anybody would like to ask me before I leave the stage. Chief, can, can, can we keep the questions to after the meeting? Oh, can well, you I, stay after just a little bit? Well, you I want mean, a couple questions? I just want a couple questions. All right, we'll I give them a couple questions. questions. I appreciate it. We've got a couple of very yeah, eager yeah, question yeah. askers here. Yes. Yeah. That is a great question, and the answer is yes. We have. You can repeat the question. Sorry. Oh, okay. mess my flow up here, Steve. I'm sorry, I messed up your flow. Mess my flow up, Steve. <laughs> uh, that's a great question, and act we are actively uh, recruiting uh, many women to the ranks of fire recruit. Um, we also have a fire cadet program that we have the interaction between the ages of 14 and 18. Um, and we also have a program that some of our female firefighters have interacted with out at Scarlet Oaks where they have like a day for women in fire. Yes, yeah, so I think they had like 60 young ladies that uh, participated in that. So, yeah, we're very, very aware that we need to bring more women in on the department. In the back there, sir. Bring your pillow. <laughs> we'll put you on engine 35, the Midnight Express. Come on. Can we give you a, can we give the chief a round of applause? I'm sorry, Chief. Thank you, my friend. Hey, this is one of my favorite meetings of the year. Chief Washington, thank you for coming and joining us, for celebrating all of these awardees for investing in Cincinnati Fire Department, self-improvement, and for, the, for the, just the bravery and heroism of service above self. Uh, we all here in this hall have great respect for our community heroes, and thank you so much. In recognition of your presentation today, Chief Washington, I'd like to give you this Rotary Club of Cincinnati coin. On the back is the four-way test. This is kind of how we do good, right? Do the right thing and do good and live our motto of service above self. And in addition, to help your efforts, help your Cincinnati Firefighter Foundation, we'd like to make a donation that you can do good with some of this as well. So, hey, Ed, can we get a picture? You know, the chief, the chief's not feeling the love. Yeah. The chief said, you're know, taking pictures of all these other folks, you know. You know we're <laughs> chief Washington, it's a pleasure. We, we uh, thank you for the, for the grace of a few extra minutes. There are a few committee meetings. There is a classification meet meeting in Salon H and I upstairs. There's a finance committee meeting in the Julep Room. There's a Jefferson Award Committee in Salon M upstairs. There's hands-on services meeting in Boardroom 4 downstairs. Next week, we have Mike Zelkind, CEO of 80 Acres, be here. Till then, have a great week. Meeting adjourned.